Hey guys, it's John here. Welcome back to Pico Cosmos. Today we'll be setting up a tank of Themnocephalus platyurus, better known by their common name, beaver tail fairy shrimp. Fairy shrimp are a freshwater cousin of sea monkeys, which are found in ephemeral pools and lakes all over the world. And the beaver tails we'll be growing today are one of the largest fairy shrimp species, growing up to five centimeters or two inches in length. They're not quite this color, but this figurine gives you a good idea of their size and morphology when fully grown. And while they do look very similar and are closely related to brine shrimp, they swim and reproduce in quite a unique way. I purchased these dried eggs from the Arizona Fairy Shrimp website around a year ago for 12 US dollars, so I'm super excited to finally be setting up the tank today. I have a microscope here too, so you can closely monitor the development of these shrimp with me over the next few weeks as they grow. The kit I bought comes with a detailed set of hatching and raising instructions, which are all really useful because I don't have much experience with this species. I'll go over them in more detail when I get around to the setup. Next are the three pouches that came with this kit. The first is labelled 50 Eggs Beaver Tail Fairy Shrimp. For anybody who hasn't seen this species before, their name comes from their uniquely shaped tail that's quite different from other fairy shrimp species, as rather than being a single point or forked, it flattens out in a similar way to that of a beaver. Now, something interesting about these kits is that it's not uncommon to have the eggs of other species in here too, so it's possible we'll have a few other critters to look at in our tank. Here's a quick look at the contents under the microscope so you can see the shape of those eggs up close. It looks like there's more detritus in here, but I can also see a bunch of beaver tail eggs too. They're absolutely tiny, so it's really cool seeing them in this much detail. The strange looking dimpled texture they have surprisingly isn't from the desiccation. For whatever reason, that's just how they look. The second pouch is labelled Shrimp Food A. I believe the contents of this is primarily detritus. Detritus is a dried soil-like substance made of organic matter that is often found at the bottom of ephemeral pools where fairy shrimp live. The detritus will provide a substrate at the bottom of our tank that helps to promote the growth of infusoria that the beaver tails will then feed on. Infusoria are microscopic organisms that live in freshwater, such as algae, ciliates, and small invertebrates. We'll have a closer look at them under the microscope once the biological system is up and running. The third pouch is Shrimp Food B. I'm not entirely sure what this is composed of, but judging from the color of it, it appears to be a yeast-based powdered food. And last up, this is the tank I'll be using. The Arizona Fairy Shrimp kits don't come with any kind of aquarium, so you need to source your own. And well, this isn't really a proper aquarium, but rather just a plastic organizer container with a capacity of about 6 litres or about 1.5 gallons, so it should work well for this project. The tank fits perfectly on my windowsill too, so that's a big plus. Let's get it set up. First we'll pour in 6 litres of water. The instructions recommend using distilled water as it's supposed to give the highest hatch rate, but I've heard that spring water works well for fairy shrimp too, so that's what I'm using for today's setup. Next we'll pour in shrimp food A. This is the detritus substrate I mentioned earlier. Since it's all dried out, it can take a day or two before it absorbs enough water to sink to the bottom, which is why there's still quite a bit of it floating up at the surface. Now it's time to pour in the egg packet. Since I've had this sitting around for over a year, I'm not sure what the hatch rate will be like, but I'm hopeful that we'll get at least a few beaver tails. Alright, now I just need to find a good spot to keep this tank for the next few weeks. The instructions say a window is the best place to keep the aquarium, ideally one that receives 1-2 to two hours of direct sunlight each day, so this window sill should be perfect. Beaver tail fairy shrimp have a preference for warmer conditions of around 20-27 to 27 degrees Celsius or 68-80 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's important that their temperature is stable, so I'm going to be using this small aquarium heater. It's not particularly strong, but since this tank is only around 1.5 gallons, I'm sure it'll be adequate. I'm setting the thermostat to 25 degrees Celsius to keep them in the upper end of their temperature range, which should encourage fast hatching and development. Next I'll be using this USB powered air pump to provide the growing shrimp with plenty of oxygen. It's not really necessary to add it into the tank until after they've hatched, but I just want to get everything going now. It should hopefully help the detritus to sink a little more quickly too. Lastly I'm going to put a lamp above this tank that I plan to leave on for around 16 hours each day. We're approaching spring here in New Zealand, so the days are starting to get longer, but light is super important for both the beaver tails and the algae that they eat, so I'm sure they'll appreciate me extending the length of their day by a few hours. That's all for now, 
These fairy shrimp should take around 24 hours to start hatching, so I'll check back in with you guys tomorrow for an update. Hey guys, I have an update for you on the beaver tail tank. It's been about 23 hours since I added in the eggs, and we already have a few baby fairy shrimp swimming around in the tank. I've spotted about 8 so far, and it seems that every 10 minutes or so there's a new one hatching, so I'm hopeful that over the next few days, even more will emerge and we'll end up with a decent little colony. These tiny hatchlings you can see swimming around are called Norpley, and they're no more than a millimetre long at this larval stage. But they'll get considerably larger over the next few weeks, and their bodies will go through a lot of developmental changes as they grow too. You might have already noticed a few changes to the tank since yesterday. The water is looking quite brown now. That's because of all of the beneficial tannins that are slowly being released by the detritus on the bottom of the tank. It doesn't look too pretty, but the shrimp love it. The water level is a little higher now as well. That's because over the past day, I've slowly been adding more water into the tank to make sure any eggs floating at the surface don't get stuck up on the walls of the tank. Anyway, back to the babies. These Norplies swim in quite a curious way. They use their two largest antennae as swimming appendages, which they flap to propel themselves up the water column before laying motionless and falling, only to catch themselves and start swimming again. Perhaps this motionlessness is to avoid predators? I'm not really sure. Let's check them out under the microscope to get a closer look. Here's a baby that's still hatching from its egg. It's encased in a membrane, which it'll have to break through before it can start swimming freely. It's pretty incredible to see this first sign of life. And here's a look at a fully hatched Norpleus. They look very similar to other vernal pool crustaceans at this larval stage, with a small round body, two large swimming antennae, and a single red eye. You'll notice that they're an orange color too. That's because they're born with a yolk-like substance in their gut, which they slowly feed on during the first few days of life, which is why we don't have to feed them quite yet. All right, let's get this guy back into the tank. The instructions say not to feed them for another day or so, so I'll check back in with you guys in two days from now for another tank update and their first feeding. Good morning, guys. It's been three days since the beaver tails hatched, so I'm super excited to finally feed them today. I've really been enjoying just sitting and watching this tank over the last few days. It's really incredible just how quickly these guys grow. There are somewhere around 30 babies in there now, and most of them have already doubled or even tripled in size. Before I feed them, I want to pop one under the microscope to get a better look at how their bodies are changing. Pretty big difference, huh? They already have their two median eyes beginning to grow on the sides of their heads, and their bodies have started to elongate considerably. They're no longer a round orange ball, but they're actually starting to look like a little shrimp. You'll notice that some ridges are forming along the sides of their body. These are the first signs of theracopods, which are leaf-like legs that they'll eventually use for swimming. Keep an eye on them, as they'll be growing a lot over the next week. I've also noticed the development of a lot of infusoria at the bottom of the tank. You can see thousands of them here crawling around. These are mostly ciliates. They're much too small to see with the naked eye, but my macro lens picks them up well. These guys do a great job of breaking down organic material on the tank and also provide food for the shrimp too. Speaking of which, it's finally time to feed the fairy shrimp. I bet they're starting to get quite hungry now. The food that came with this set is labeled Shrimp Food B. Its pale yellow color means it's probably yeast based. The instructions recommend mixing the food with water before putting it into the tank, as this will help to evenly distribute it throughout the water column where it'll be easy for the babies to access and eat. I'm only going to feed them a small amount today because I want to be careful not to overfeed them. Plus, they're just really small, so it's not like they need much at this stage anyway. I'll give you guys another update in a few days from now to see how much they've grown. Good morning guys. It's day 7 today, which means that at one week old, our beaver tails are officially teenagers. Their growth has been impressively quick over the last few days, and you can see that they're already starting to take the shape of adult fairy shrimp. I'd estimate their current size to be around 1-2cm to two centimeters long, so even though they still have a fair bit of growing to do, their size is already similar to that of their briny sea monkey cousins. You can see their characteristic beaver shaped tail is beginning to come through too. This unusual trait is unique to the Themnocephalus genus, which makes this species quite special to observe. Unfortunately, not all of the beaver tails are doing great though. While most of them do look very healthy, I've spotted a few at the bottom of the tank that are close to or have already passed away. I'm not entirely sure why, because the majority of the colony is doing quite well. 
I'll be keeping a close eye on things to make sure the rest of the fairy shrimp are doing okay. I'll give you guys another update in a week or two when these beaver tails are fully growing so you can see how they look at full maturity. I've actually spotted what is likely a second fairy shrimp species in here too, so stay tuned to get a closer look at them in the next update. Hey guys, it's been almost four weeks now since the beaver tail fairy shrimp first hatched, and I'm happy to say that they're now fully growing. Unfortunately, not all of them have made it to adulthood. There was a bit of a bacterial bloom two weeks ago that turned the water really cloudy. I did manage to save the last of them by doing an emergency water change, but there was still a pretty decent die off. The good news is that five beaver tails managed to survive. Four males and one beautiful female. And at two inches long, they're absolutely huge now. You might have noticed that there's another fairy shrimp species in here as well. Two red tails, one male and one female. These shrimp aren't quite as large as the beaver tails, but they're known for being really resilient, which is likely why they both survived. Red tail fairy shrimp are characterized by their brightly colored forked tails. Under the microscope, we can appreciate its beautiful detail. It's so cool seeing these fine structures which are usually too small to be picked up by the naked eye. It's not uncommon for fairy shrimp egg sets to come with multiple species, which is why these guys are also in the tank. These bonus shrimp species always make the surprise of hatching the eggs and watching them grow really exciting. And as cool as those red tails are, it's the beaver tail fairy shrimp in here which are definitely my favorite. Watching them gracefully swim around the tank is hypnotic and really relaxing too. The males are slightly smaller than the females. They're about four centimeters long and are characterized by thick clasping antennae on their heads that are kind of curled up. Something that makes fairy shrimp quite different from their saltwater sea monkey cousins is that they mate very quickly, where the male will grasp onto the female for only 30 seconds or so to quickly exchange genetic material before letting go. I'm sure you guys can relate. The females on the other hand are a little longer at about 5 centimeters or 2 inches and their frontal antennae are very long and thin. I absolutely love the way they look. I think they're probably my favorite branchiopod species, at least from a visual perspective. You'll also notice an egg sac at the base of her abdomen which is beginning to grow cysts. Unlike sea monkeys, female fairy shrimp are incapable of live birthing their young. Instead, they always produce eggs that need to be completely desiccated and then rehydrated in order to hatch. That means your fairy shrimp tank will only last the lifetime of your shrimp, which is usually just a couple of months. This can be seen as a downside to raising fairy shrimp, but it's also just kind of cool that you get to experience the magic and privilege of an ephemeral pool in your home, even if only for a short time. And since this female will eventually lay these eggs, I can always just let the tank water completely evaporate and then fill it with water again to restart the process. I've really enjoyed raising these fairy shrimp over the last few weeks, and I'm glad I'll have another month or two to appreciate them for a bit longer. Let me know down in the comments if you guys liked this video, and if you're interested in seeing more freshwater species on the channel in the future. I think there's a lot of potential here, not just with different animals, but also adding in tank mates and aquarium plants too, so I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.